Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a simple message box with Visual Basic for applications in Microsoft Excel. Okay, the first thing we need to do is surprisingly open Microsoft Excel. If you haven't got the developer toolbar enabled on Microsoft Excel 2010, you'll need to do this. Um, basically, you can do that in files and then view toolbars and basically yeah enable it through there I think it's through options actually I can't remember anyway <laughs> that's not very good for a training video um, otherwise without getting to your developer toolbar you could just hit alt and F11 okay so this is a, a message box that I created earlier um, I'll show, basically talk you through what this means. So what I've done is I've declared a public sub. So all subs default to public um, unless you state either private or public operators. There's some other things like uh, class modules and um, procedures and functions. You can create your own functions. I'll show you how to do that in another kind of uh, demo. But this, all we're doing for a starter is creating a simple message box. So just forget this code for the time being. And what I'll do is I'll open VV back up and I'll insert a new module. The module is where we hold the code. As you can see, class module, you can create your own kind of um, your own classes so if you had like certain employees in a database or an employee name and stuff like that you can create a class module and then you can refer to that class module in code but that's a bit too advanced for now so what we're going to do is create a module and a user form as well a user form is what a user would click i.e. a form that I'm using now is the visual basic applications form that's been developed by Microsoft but basically that's just a glorified user form okay module then so what do we want to do we want to create a public sub most people type sub but that's a lazy habit to get into I like to make sure that I make it private or public okay so you can with public you can access it outside of this module you can access it from the whole project whereas private it will be only private to that module or this project that doesn't really explain it very well <laughs> Gary but for more I'd, I'd check the Microsoft help website about access modifiers so what we're going to do there's a special term for message box in VB message box okay so as you can see that's what I love about IntelliSense it comes up and it gives you options so prompt so the prompt is the message text that we want to appear on the message box so let's uh, think of something this is my first message box or hello world as Microsoft will tell you they always start with that one okay VB information oh yeah and let's give it a title Gary's that's me by the way message box and my type in is absolutely crap today okay so as you can see what I've done there is create a message box what I want it to say the message body text is this is my first message box or hello world the type of message box I want it to be is a VB information message box and the title I've given it is Gary's message box so in the application window you can click the run and as you can see it's created Gary's message box this is my first message box or hello world and it's give you the option just to click OK I'll show you how you can actually get other options later on so you can also change it to a, a number of different types of message box basically once you put a comma in your uh, IntelliSense will come up and it gives you loads a lot so you can select it as a system modal that will mean that um, 
you can't do anything until the message box has been cleared or okayed so we can have a VB um, exclamation did we not use that one uh, and I want to I want to specify that I want a VB uh, plus that I want a VB um, retry cancel so to speak so as you can see I'll run that again as you can see retry retry and cancel and the kind of logo changed so I'm going to cancel that for a minute um, I want a I'm actually going to do a VB question and most message boxes you use will probably use this syntax VB question and VB yes no yes no okay so what I'll do now is ask you this is my first message box yes so let's say that I want to I'll, then I want to handle that message box this is where it gets a bit trickier I don't know if you've been introduced to dimension variables but they're what hold kind of variables within the memory within VB so you always you always do the declare code word of the dim for dimension variable uh, my message and then you have to set a type so as it's probably going to be a string a string means so then what I'll do is assign my message to message box this is my first message box okay and then because we've designed it, assigned it to a variable you'll have to wrap the actual text with parentheses so start and end so it's still the same, it'll still do the same operation, but what we're going to do now is these two buttons here, the yes and no, we want to try and handle those. So if, always with the if construct, if my message equals bb yes, then you'll get used to the if then, if then else if syntax. But for more, I'll show you more examples of if later on in further lessons. Or you can refer to the M MSDN website in relation to Visual Basic for Excel, or Visual Basic for Access, or Word, or PowerPoint, or Outlook, or any of the projects. But for now, we'll just say that this is the way that you'd actually structure your if uh, VBS or if VB knows. Okay? So what I'm going to do is message box. you clicked yes you certainly did okay so I'm going to say VB info for that one and I'm going to do else message box equals you click to no okay so we're going to have VB crit Okay, critical because you've clicked no and I don't like that. <laughs> okay, uh, and then end if. Okay, so what happens now? Let's just show you. Let's press play. So, no. Oh, no, you click no. You see? That's how you handle the VB and yes. Normally, you probably wouldn't use message boxes. You'd probably put some code in here like um, range. Um, A one two. I don't know. I'm just going to select range A one, or I'm just going to activate it. Actually, dot activate. Okay. Um, click no. Let's exit sub as well. Exit sub. That just means that it exits out the current sub that you're in. So, okay. Yes. As you can see, you click yes. And the better example of that would be if I actually move the cursor somewhere else. So I'll show you. So let's, let's run that again and click yes. And it's back to range A1. And that's how you'd perform a select. And then you can like copy or you can paste into different cells. You can 
loop through there's loads of different things that you can do with rangers absolutely loads rows cells columns you can do an int row counter an int cold counts you can do a nested loop there's a lot of things you can do but at this stage basically you're learning the basics you're learning how to actually create a message box so after that i'll perhaps teach you how to do input boxes and then handle the value then we'll have a look at loops different types of loops do loops for each loops please subscribe to my videos um, and i hope this helps okay thanks for watching